All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Yeshim, Yahweh Shai by Yeshim, Rakah HaKwadash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders <clears throat> of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutation unto the hopeful elect. This is the brother Bakwasha. And um, I just want to go into a couple of scriptures uh, regarding, you know, this war in which we're in, the spiritual war in which we're in. And uh, it's a constant war because um, this is a part of the punishment of our disobedience, which is uh, to be in these chains of darkness and to have these these scenarios befall us to understand uh, the evil that this world can present and what it looks like, you know, because we we had paradise, you know, and Lord's Lord's will, we will also receive paradise soon in salvation in the kingdom of righteousness. <clears throat> However, um, while we're at war, um, there there are moments where the war becomes more crystallized. And I say that because um, in certain seasons of um, Esau's calendar, um, they celebrate more of the um, exaltation, you know, of wickedness. Obviously, we know about, you know, All Hallows Eve, which is one of the pinnacles. But then uh, alongside that, is Saturnalia or what people call uh, Xmas. I'll just say that. And uh, as I was talking to one of the, you know, elders, brothers in the camp, uh, one of the heads in the camp, you know, we just had a conversation about during these periods of time, the, the wickedness is always ramped up. And, uh, you know, it's all throughout the camp, you know, brothers dealing with adversities. But um, I experienced, and we all experience different forms of it, but this level of of wickedness and evil in which I've recently experienced, um, it just brought back to light the, the war in which we're in. Not that there was a displacement of the war but it was very, it was a very, uh, it was recognized very visibly or apparently. So like it, it was, it was recognized very apparently um, in the spirit that, you know, this was an evil scenario going on and uh, I'm not going to go into it or at least not on, on in this lesson. I just want to highlight, you know, the, um, the battle in which we're in and how Yahweh Shem Shah has equipped us, um, you know, with this armor. So I'm just going to start here in Ephesians 6, chapter 10. <clears throat> it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because they're constant, you know, um, and that armor, you know, is this truth. You know, the more we equip ourselves with this truth, the more we're protected, you know, and um, because those wiles are what the adversary, what the devil is here to do. You know, he, he, he's like the ultimate prankster, the ultimate jokester um, and seeking to destroy and to kill, you know, and so. um this is a constant thing that we're, we're having to endure, but the armor of Yahweh by Shimei Shai, <clears throat> but the armor of Yahweh by Shimei Shai gives us the protection that we need in order to withstand and um, the uh, defense. You know, the scriptures go into the shield, the book, the the sword, 
Uh, all of that you can read in the rest of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. But I just want to highlight the 12th verse because it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so I just want to go into a couple of uh, terms in which um, reflect, you know, this warfare in which we're in. And that first word here is. Strong's G746. Arche. Arche. And we're just going to get definition five. It says the first place, principality, rule, magistracy of angels and demons. Okay. So these are the principal, you know, chiefs on the left hand side, you know, that are creating these wiles. And let's get this word here, wiles, real quick, too. Strong's G, 3180, Methodia, Methodia. It says travesty, trickery, lying weight, craft, deceit, you know. And so these things are set up in the unseen, you know, um, to where if not um, walking spiritually, walking in faith, they will... Uh, be a snare unto us in the, in the scene, you know? And so, like I said, I just wanted to, to go into this quick scripture because there's a couple other scriptures I want to bring out. Um, and, and I might read verse 13 as well, because that armor is really just the protection that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that Yahweh by Shem Yahushai has given us of this world to where we don't look at the things that we see in the, uh, the, the physical, but we realize that there are things being done in the spiritual, you know, to really attack us. All right. So this is Ephesians 6 and 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Because that's what these principalities, that's what these evil you know, uh, demons, you know, do is they're, they're trying to, uh, make us fall and not just fall in the physical sense, but fall in the sense of faith and trust and confidence that we have in Yahweh by Shem Shai. Okay. It may be family related. It may be job related and all of these things don't matter at the end of the day, but these things are being used by the devil um, as a snare or as a trick or as a, a way to get us off the path of righteousness. Okay. So next scripture I want to bring out is second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Um, because it goes into, it says, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And so, that's one of the wiles that the devil does is he will use uh, family members. He will use coworkers. He will use someone on the freeway cutting you off. Brothers in the camp have been um, in several automobile accidents, myself included. Okay. Um, <laughs> and one recently, uh, uh, not even a fender bender, but it's during these periods of time especially that evil in itself uh, really pushes the limits of this spiritual warfare, you know? And, you know, Satan can use any agent, any vessel that is not under the covering and the protection of Yahweh by Hashem Shai, okay, to deceive and to destroy Okay, scripture talks about how the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Okay, and when you think of what about what a thief does, a thief is pulling a trick. Okay, or he's he's uh 
He's coming in unawares. Okay. And, and that's, that's one of the cunning. I think that was one of the definitions. It says, um, cunning arts. Okay. Scripture says that Esau was a cunning hunter. Okay. So these characteristics lie within Esau, the so-called white man. Okay. But they can, but Satan himself, the spirit, okay. Can use anyone outside of the, the, the temple of Yahweh by Shemi Abishai, the hopefully elect. Okay. To deceive and to kill and to destroy. And like I said, these are refreshers, but that's the transformation. And let's get into that word transformation because I think I pulled that up here a second ago. Strong's G, 3345, metaschematizo. Metaschematizo. Con. Okay. It says to change the figure of, to transform. It says, and that's where that word meta comes into play. It says to change the figure of, to transform, to transform one into someone, to assume one's appearance. Okay. And so you may be looking at, uh, you may be looking at a coworker and brothers, obviously the, the more you are in tune with the spirit, you'll start to see coworkers, family members, the demons will pop up on them. You know, their whole, uh, their whole countenance will change, not dramatically, but it will change or transform. Okay. And that's why, the scripture is so uh, stark because it says, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So has the appearance now in, in this scenario is going into, you know, false prophets and, you know, especially the, the, the quote unquote Pope, right? You know, that's, that's a super demon, but I'm just giving the aspects of the principalities and the wiles of the devil and how these scenarios can happen right before your eyes because this is a spiritual warfare. Okay? And at any given time, just like in the movie The Matrix, you know that scene in The Matrix where Morpheus is telling Neo how, you know, while you're in The Matrix, realize that everybody else is asleep or they're in darkness. And while they're in darkness, they're uh, susceptible Okay, to being uh, activated by Satan, man. Most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. Who is it? This... This isn't the Matrix. No. It's another training program designed to teach you one thing. If you are not one of us, you are one of them. What are they? Sentient programs. They can move in and out of any software still hardwired to their system. That means that anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the Matrix, they are everyone and they are no one. You know, which is another reason why to have on this whole armor of Yahweh by Shemi Shai. Okay? Because at any given time, you can be blindsided. You can be hit from the rear. You know? But as long as you got that armor on, you won't fall. You may, you may, you know, lose your balance, but you won't fall. Okay, you'll still stand because because you're firm in the armor. And and like I said, Lord Will, I'm not going too much into the other lesson I want to get into, but I just wanted to kind of cover some of the things that um I'm sure brothers are aware of, 
But especially, like I said, during this during this gambit of quote unquote holiday, pagan holiday uh, rituals. Um, yeah, bro- brothers are catching it in different scenarios. Um, but when you're aware of it, you can at least uh, understand it and either avoid the situations, keep yourself out of the situations. But then sometimes, hey, that that's what the armor is for. You know, it's for a blow that you didn't see coming. But that protection is through you. How by Shimei was shy. Okay. Um, next scripture here is <clears throat> Matthew chapter four. And obviously, uh, this is Satan tempting Yahweh Shai, you know, and this is always a good uh, reference point, or at least that I use when, as, as I'm walking, you know, in, in this, in this, this truth, in the faith, knowing that, you know, Yahweh Shai has, has been tempted above all the things that we're ever going to go through. You know, so so that's the example of of how to to overcome, you know, the devil. Because yeah, I shy had that same armor of Yahweh by Shimi Shai as well. And I'm just gonna hit a couple quick points. This is Matthew four and three, because this is after Yahweh Shai fasted for forty days and forty nights. Okay, obviously. Spirit was on a whole different level, okay, afflicting his soul. It says, and when the tempter, okay, and I think I grabbed that word there too. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be son of Yahweh, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of Yahweh. Okay, so he he had on the armor as well. Okay, he had the scriptures. He he wasn't being deceived. He he wasn't being ensnared by the wiles of the devil, because he was dealing with the chief principality of a demon. Okay, Shatan. Right. So let's get into this word here, tempter, real quick. Strong's G, 3985, Pairazzo, Pairazzo. Pairazzo. It says to try a thing can be done to make trial for the purpose of ascertaining its quality. To test one's faith, virtue, character by enticement to sin. Okay. And one of the scenarios that, like I said, I you know just not gonna touch on it right now, or at least in detail, but a scenario occurred to where um, the the flesh almost overruled the spirit enough to where I almost became carnal, you know. And there's moments I'm sure in which all brothers you know, are tempted or are tried, but even here in Yahweh Shai's scenario, always refer, referring back to the scriptures or referring back to the truth now eliminates that enticement to sin. Okay? And that's why this is a spiritual warfare. You know? You got Dennis the Menace, Esau the so-called white man, Okay, running around enticing us to uh, cater to the flesh through emotions, through feelings, through these vibrations of, of, of songs. Okay, through these through these nasty ass women. Okay, that's his purpose. Okay. He's against righteousness. Okay. So to tempt means that he's going to put forth something that is carnal. 
to draw out the things that are carnal within us to uh, attempt to get us to go off or err against Yahweh by Shemia Okay. It says to solicit to sin. Wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn you Satan. <laughs> Man. Mm. It says, I'm going to read this last one here. By impious or wicked conduct to test God's justice and patience and to challenge him as it were to give proof of his perfections. Mm. To test, endeavor, scrutinize, entice, discipline. I say, examine. Okay. So, in the scenario with Yahweh Shai, okay, Yahweh Shai always reverted back to the scriptures. We likewise always reverting back to the scriptures is our uh, escape. Okay, that is our that is our our uh, that is our sanctuary. Okay, because that is uh, the armor that protects us from sinning. And in the scenario with myself and, you know, I'm sure other brothers before, you can be tested to a point to where you, uh, to where you don't, you don't, you don't, you just act carnally in that situation. And, and this was definitely one of those situations, you know? But even going back to Yahweh Shai, this is this is the strength of Yahweh Shai being shown to us to where we can also rule our spirit, okay, um, and not have this flesh to overtake us, you know, to entice us. It said to solicit to sin. My goodness, man. Mm. And that's what advertising goes into, but that's a whole nother lesson in itself. Um, so let's uh let's bring out one more and then we'll wrap up. Um yeah, let's read four through <laughs> let's read six through eleven. It says, And saith unto him, If thou be son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Yahweh Shai said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy power. Again, and, and as you can tell, you know, the damn devil is, is uh, seeking whom he may devour, man. You know? Like when you think about it, Esau is driven by his lust. Just like we're driven by the spirit of righteousness, Esau is driven by that carnal spirit, blood, death, carnality, okay? Appetite, passions, okay? They don't they 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 are beast. Okay? No different from from a a, a dog. I mean, obviously you know they have faculties of mind, <clears throat> but they're but they're uh, they're overruled by the spirit of Satan. Okay, that's why they can be overtaken and used as a vessel. Okay, to solicit the sin. Okay, and that's what Satan was doing here with Yahweh Shai. It says again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of, of the world and the glory of them. <clears throat> and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thy fall down and worship me. 
Then saith Yahweh Shai unto him, Get thee, th get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shalt thy serve. It says, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So Yahweh Shai denied what Satan was doing as far as his, his ploy or his snare of his words, okay, with the scriptures, right? And then he used his words, the power, okay, of the words of the Holy Spirit and told him to get the hints, basically get the hell out of here, okay? And we have that same power to do those things in those situations because as Jacob trouble as Jacob's trouble uh, in, uh, incurs, okay, these same scenarios we're going to have to apply practically, okay, on a daily basis as soon as the scenarios happen, okay, because there are going to be scenarios that are going to tempt us to become carnal, And it's been a while since I ever wanted my lick back. But in this scenario, it was very apparent that this was wickedness attempting to solicit me to err against you out by Shimei Awashai. Okay. And so call all like how by Shimei Awashai, you know, for this truth and this word. And the obedience that Yahweh by Shimei uh, has has given us the the ability to use, you know. Um, so anyway, let's 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 wrap up because um, my voice is just tripping right now. So let's lock it, brothers. Um, obviously, First Peter. Five and eight, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. OK, we, we, we've gone into all of these same scenarios. OK. That's why we put on the whole armor. OK, because it's a war. OK. Esau is losing, Satan's losing. OK. And, 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 and they're taking cheap shots, especially during this time. OK. Everybody's on, on on demon mode during these pagan holidays, you know? So so that's why we work walk circumspectly, okay? Not as fools. Okay, redeeming the time because the days are evil, right? Um there's one I think uh word I wanted to bring out here. What's this one? I think this goes into uh Adversary. Yep, con. Strong's G476. Antidikas. Antidikas. It says an opponent in a lawsuit. So basically, Esau and Satan are teaming up to, well, it says, especially Satan as the arch enemy, the adversary. Okay. They're trying to uh, charge or bring accounts. To Yahweh by Shimei uh regarding the saints. Okay. <laughs> Esau's, Esau's roaming about seeking whom he may devour it, which is by having the people cater to them their own flesh, which is uh going into that word bone appetite, which uh, I believe means to eat your heart out. Let me let me see if I can pull this up. Real quick. Yeah, I looked it up, and I mean, basically, it's been watered down, but it goes into appetite and desire, eagerness, and so yeah, they you know that's what Esau is doing through um, Satan is he's having people to cater to their desires cater to their appetite and those desires are mental. Okay. 
So just like the desire for food, the desire for, um, you know, clothing, the desire for shoes. Okay. Esau markets that desire to uh, the people and makes them vain because they just keep eating of the desires of their heart or their mind and they're never uh, filled okay with the the truth or the or the light of Yahweh Shai. okay so they stay on that base creature level okay so that that's that's the opponent that's what the opponent is doing he's he's wanting he's wanting the elect to cater to the flesh in these scenarios as a war tactic okay Food, finances, family, you know, um, fun. Okay, all of these things are can be used against um, us. You know, so I just wanted to go into that real quick. Um, I might have one more here. Oh yeah, con con con. Yeah, let's wrap up with this. This is Ephesians one and seventeen. And obviously, this is uh, this is Paul um, speaking to the uh, saints at Ephesus. But there's one part down here in the bottom that I want to kind of cover. And uh, Lord will, this lesson was edifying for the elect. Um, Con, let's start at Ephesians one and seventeen. It says that the power of our Lord Yahweh Mashiach, the Father of Glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Hamashiach when he raised him from the dead and set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places. And this is the point in verse 21, far above all principality, and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and so calling on the names of Yahweh by Shai by Shimrakahakudash okay those names give us power over all principalities. Which is the reason why Satan had to dip. Okay. And power and might and dominion in every name that is named. So when we say those names, you know, I rebuke thee, Satan, in the name of Yahweh Shimei Shai. He has to leave. That is a power. That is a power that this world does not want us to know or to have. So it uses the flesh as a way to dampen our spirit to where we doubt in those scenarios and cater to the flesh. That is the war. That is one of the aspects of of war. That is not the war. That is one of the aspects of war. And this shows that there's a world to come. <laughs> it says in every name that is named, not only in this world present, but also in that which is to come. So Yahweh Shai's name, okay. Yahweh by Shimi Yahweh Shai's name, uh, obviously, but, but that order of those names is above all principalities, man. 
Okay. So this is this is a part of that armor as well. You know. This is a part of the sword, the shield, the helmet, the the, the whole ensemble. But but also knowing, you know, those names, uh, that that in itself is uh, those those powers, mm, those names are powers that cannot be uh, overcome. You know, and it reminds me of a, a quick scene in the movie Dune, D-U-N-E, where he used a, a certain voice or a certain frequency of voice and it literally shattered and broke into pieces, um, you know, any any elements. Arato. This obelisk is of your hardest stone. Kick it. Hit it. Yell at it. Break! <laughs> Corbin, cut it. Move back. is part of the weirding way that we will teach you some thoughts have a certain sound that being the equivalent to a form through sound and motion you will be able to paralyze nerves shatter bones set fires suffocate an enemy or burst his organs we will kill until no Harkonnen breathes Arakeen air Stilgar. Moi deep. My name is a killing word. They are ready to fight. Yet in order to lead them, I must conquer the worm. You know, and 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 that's what those names, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, um, give us. It gives us power, you know, to to rule over evil, you know, um, in the times of war. So, um, I just wanted to go into that real quick, Lord Will. It was edifying for the elect, Lord Lord Will. It was, um, and I wasn't all over the place, but um, yeah, it was just a couple of things on my spirit. Just wanted to uh, put on wax. So Lord will, it was edifying to the next time. Call halal la yahaw by Shimei Abishai, by Shem Rakah Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, bishops and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutation unto the whole full elect. Until next time, Shalom.